next up, we have a wonderful guest, the lovely Chris Rexroth, whose name I kept saying last night because I think Rexroth sounds super fun. <laughs> uh, joining us from the Cosmic Open Source Implantable Devices. So take it away, Chris. Yeah, I'm happy to be there. And I'm kind of I'm kind of sorry for the sake of the thermometer. I signed up last night. That might have been before the drive. Um, uh, we'll count it. Yeah, we, we'll count um, it. We'll add it. We'll count it. it. We'll add it. 12. It counts. 12. It counts. Well, Color that oh, thermometer. Yeah. yeah, it counts. It counts. We'll pretend you signed up after midnight, so it counts. Yeah. Perfect. I feel like we can cheat a little bit. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it to you. Great. Can you see my screen? I will put your screen on, add it to. All right, is it going? I lost audio of you too. Yeah, you're good to go. You're all set. Great. Great. Well, thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Chris Rexroth. Uh, I'm a part of the Cosmic team and we are developing an open source implantable medical device. Um, so I'm very excited to talk to you, especially after Alicia talking about the open healthware and OSHWA uh, and the abilities for overlap there. So I myself, I would consider myself a bioelectrical engineer, uh, but I work in embedded software and I'm a member of OSHWA. Um, so our group uh, started about two years ago uh, on this open source initiative for medical devices. Uh, and our first trip out to an open hardware summer uh, summit was this past May in Montreal, had an absolute blast meeting everybody and really learning about um, how can we best document things uh, to communicate uh, what we're doing and how people can use our device. We That's really what we wanted to attack showing up to the Open Hardware Summit and we got some great feedback out of that. Um, so I, I'm going to be talking about open source medical devices um, and so kind of the need for an open source medical device is that there are commercialized therapies and these require new specialized technology. Uh, these implanted devices are made for a very spe specific medical intervention. Um, that's not an issue, that's a great thing. Uh, that's a part of the supply chain. It's about of making sure that the therapy is being met directly with a specialized piece of technology. What gets in the way of that, though, uh, of uh, applying those technologies to new therapies is that the product development and validation of new devices is cost and exper expertise intensive while reusing those devices um, and their inflexibility and high cost to researchers inhibits the ability to develop new therapies using those same devices. So what do we need? We need the ability to create new devices faster for less cost let's approach an open source hardware model for doing that. Um, so as I talk about implanted medical devices, there's a whole slew of examples that are a bit more familiar, less familiar. Everyone's probably familiar with pacemakers for the heart, maybe even cochlear implants for hearing, uh, but then there are some others like deep brain stimulators um, and drug delivery pumps. We're gonna be specifically talking about the field of neuromodulation or electrical stimulation uh, being used to change the activity of nerves. Um, so, for example, drug delivery pumps would not fall under this, but a deep brain stimulator would. Uh, so an open source uh, neuromodulation platform, what do people need out of that? And what do they need out of the device that they want to adapt? They need access to that knowledge base, all of the documentation, the history of the device, and they need a full control and adaptability over it so that a researcher can take a device, an open source design, and apply it to something new without worry of licensing proprietary information. Um, and then beyond that, what do they really need to make that happen? There's a whole slew of regulatory approvals and resources that are needed to get there. So I'll talk about this list later uh, in that last bullet point. Or, uh, and then they also need integrations with their existing devices or lab setups, uh, as well as shared expertise. A researcher um, will be great at developing a new therapy in their field of study, might not be the best at medical device development or the regulatory process. So how can we share those expertises throughout our community? 
Um, so our cosmic effort to create an open source device was started through the National Institutes of Health, the SPARC program, specifically the Hornet mechanism, um, which expanded on the SPARC concept of open science data for the vagus nerve and applied it to physical research tools, specifically human clinical devices. Uh, so SPARC spawned our cosmic group as well as the CARS uh, Center at USC and their open nerve platform. Um, a fun recent development that we just heard about is OSHWA being a phase two grantee uh, of the POSE at NSF and the open healthware um, OSC that they're going to be creating. So we're excited to be working, uh, hopefully work with them in the future. Uh, and I also want to point out, as I mentioned, with the Montreal Hardware Open Hardware Summit, like Ashwin Whitchurch's presentation on the Healthy Pie and other Surface devices. Uh, so we'll be talking specifically implanted, uh, but there's a lot of overlap here and ability to share resources between our groups and these grants. Um, so the system that we are making open source is a modular, fully implantable device. Uh, we're taking it a closed device and making it open compared to the CARS group or open nerve group, which is developing uh, an open source device in that open framework from the beginning. Uh, so we have a technology called the networked neuroprosthesis. Uh, it involves different stimulating and recording modules that can be plug and played throughout the body to bring different functions all in one patient. This device was developed in the scope of people with spinal cord injury to be able to return multiple muscular functions in one person. Uh, there are eight systems in people right now for over eight years. Uh, which is a very important detail for our open source ecosystem and that people can leverage that history and our existing approval with the FDA for ease of early feasibility studies. We live all around. Here's an example of the device in use. Uh, people are able to now interact with their environment, uh, specifically with their hands, which is very important. Sometimes People might assume that somebody with paralysis wants to restore walking. However, restoring hand function can allow somebody to take uh, care of themselves with smaller tasks around the house. Um, what the system looks like implanted the body is obviously there's in this module, there is a power module that controls uh, the network and power in the system. And then there are implanted pulse generators or IPG, which is a standard medical device word. Uh, as well as recording modules that can read other muscles and user inputs and help actuate um, stimulation through the IPGs. These are connected by a physical network. Um, and then there are different electro designs. So these are our first, um, along with the external control uh, and chargers, are the first part of our open source release. And as we look forward, uh, we'll be including new uh, target targeted uh, function modules. So new modules for connecting to BCI implant, um, sensors for coordinating walking, as well as a high frequency stimulator for controlling pain signals and muscle spasm signals. Um, we're also working on adapters to other implantable devices and other wireless sensors that can all be integrated into the system. So I don't need to lecture you guys on open source, uh, but for us, we include hardware, firmware, and software all together. Um, so along with that, we have fabrication instructions, we have test data, we have all of the 3D CAD data um, on top of our platform system. Uh, so I'll be talking specifically about those open source materials and we'll get to those other types of resources on the right of this diagram near the end. Um, but we've started with putting out our 3D mechanical design, uh, CAD files and drawings. Uh, I will show you to our docs page and GitHub at the end of this. Um, and essentially with a medical device, you can't just say here, take it and use it. Um, we want people to be able to reuse certain components or the enclosure. We want people to find new ways of using this device as a research tool, not just a human clinical tool. We want to be people to be able to develop with it on their benchtop, show proof of concept in animals, 
and use it in humans afterwards. But it is not so simple when it comes to the medical device product life cycle. Um, so you you need resources, time, money to show that your design is is verified for the application. You also need a regulatory approval, uh, which includes biocompatibility information. So how is the device interacting or um, sensitizing tissue? Um, is the device able to be sterilized? Is it clean when you put it into a body? Is it going to cause an infection? And then what? Are, is the risk analysis and possible adverse events for using this device. Uh, so I really like this diagram that goes kind of through the, the life cycle uh, because it shows that it's, it is a continual cycle rather than just a step-by-step. -step. There is the preclinical, clinical manufacturing aspect of it all, but when, especially when it comes to obsolescence and concepts, this is a very cyclical cycle. Um, so there, there is a diagram uh, figure common to many people in the medical device world uh, with the valley of death. So what this, what this graph shows is the, ability, the availability of resources for pushing a medical device along that life cycle. Right when you get to the middle of having to now commercialize and show that this device is verified and valid is when you run out of resources. And so we're dreaming up a model where an open source medical device is the bridge over that valley of death. Um, so what this looks like is providing those needs in addition to the wants, the needs of a design history and design files that people can use, edit, reference um, in their regulatory submissions, a suite of biocompatibility testing and making this information open source rather than closed. Um, a sterilization validation where we can share the process of getting that and how others can replicate that. It's all about how can community members using our tech get these uh, get their own regulatory submission approved. Um, one thing we've already gone ahead and done is released an example IDE or investigational device exemption application that we turned in and shared our regulatory communications with the FDA on their responses to our open source questions. These are all important things that we hope to replicate um, through our community. What it looks like after our grant funding is up is our research group is forming a startup, Cosmic Inc., which will be responsible for maintaining these open source resources, uh, being able to procure systems for researchers and help consult on the tech integration and the regulatory pathways to follow our example. Um, we're also building out resources. We want to go from a system to a platform. So what does that include in addition to the technology? It's well-documented instructions for how to integrate those communication protocols, how to make a module that works just like ours, um, developing a software development kit for easier user interface in editing the software. Uh, and then, like I mentioned, being able to go benchtop to animal to human with different levels of technology culminating in that human grade system. Uh, so really our ideal open source ecosystem and that we've proposed in our own POSE grant is that people should be able to adapt the base system for a new therapy. They should be able to integrate new modules into that base system for new therapy. And that we want people contributing back, being able to share their own regulatory communications, being able to share how they got grants using the system. Um, the Now, since it's the open source hardware month, I specifically want to talk about my interest in this project and why I see it, its importance in the world. There's the value prop to researchers and being able to customize uh, technology and the, all the fun high tech things. Um, but in addition to lowering the bar barriers to cost and all of that, I, I really see the ability for equity and openness in human health. So how, how can we, a lot of people say uh, the words democratize healthcare, um, but I never know what that means when I see that, especially from startups. So what I would like to work towards is, is at least a model of openness. Uh, so people knowing what's involved in these devices, people being able to build off of them rather than just compete with each other in an endless cycle and work towards new therapies. 
Um, another interesting thing that we see for an open source device is being able to fight device abandonment by building a, a literate user base. So at the end of a study with an implanted device, sometimes that device has to be removed from that participant. Uh, I see that as an ethical issue. Uh, and we also see the issue of a company with a commercialized device uh, folding, going bankrupt and leaving people without support and devices in people. Um, so that brings me to the last point. I see open source and I see medical devices being about people. It's the people who are developing them and collaborating in the open source world to develop them. Uh, and then most importantly, it's about the people who are being considered for these implants. It's about the function that they'll get back, but also the feedback and autonomy that they have to participate in the study, give feedback to the study, and essentially just be a part of research teams. Um, right now, you can check out our documentation at docs.cosmic.org. Cosmic has two eyes. In case you get an error, it's Cosmic with two eyes. Uh, our main site is going under maintenance, but we'll have a fun new design in a few days. Uh, and then please follow us on LinkedIn, Cosmic Two Eyes. So a big thank you for the team and sign up for Oshawa. <laughs> Hooray! That was amazing. Thank you, Chris. It was really interesting to learn just like how y'all have been approaching this, especially with implantable devices. It's always just like... It's such a challenging subject with a lot of uh, like a lot of concerns that other types of open hardware don't have to deal with. So it's really, really great to hear you elaborate on that. Yeah. We are getting a fax right, right now. now. We are currently getting a fax. Ooh. Getting a fax. Facts. Um, uh, ooh, we're getting a fax from our dear friend, Bio Murph Joel, with his badge collection. It's printing off. It'll take a moment. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. It's been really insightful just to see everything that Cosmic is working on. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to see how we can find more ways to make this open healthware thing work and figure out how open source products can move through the regulation aspects without it being such a setback and oftentimes a project killer. <laughs> so so we'll, yeah. we'll get all your links into the chat so that people can uh, follow what you're doing and looking forward to chatting with you soon. Yeah, great. Thank you so much.